Hello everyone and a warm welcome to my exciting new channel. I am thrilled to have you here today and I hope you find the content I share today both valuable and, well, entertaining. This channel revolves around the fascinating world of technology and computing. And for our first video, I've chosen a topic that I find, well, not only enjoyable, but also immensely beneficial networks, or in this case, your home network. Let me ask you a quick question. Who amongst you has a device like this here? Well, I certainly do. And for a long time, this was my network. Now I use it only for VR gaming, but I know that many people will still rely on it as their go-to networking device. Now, if you're happy with a simple router for sharing your internet connection, you know, and that's all you really want, that's perfectly fine. But what if I told you that there's a way in which you can elevate your network experience? Imagine having robust firewall features, the ability to create separate networks and VLANs, and monitoring tools for child content, dedicated networks with regular security updates. Well, if you're nodding along, then I've got something exciting for you, and it's called PFSense. PFSense is like a Swiss Army knife for your network. It's an open source firewall and router based on FreeBSD with features ranging from DNS resolver to routing proxy and content filtering and an app store consistently updated by a vibrant community. Seriously, after you start using it, this thing right here is gonna feel like a relic and you'll probably end up using it as, you know, either just a simple access point or just for VR gaming, just like I do. So what do you say? Do we ditch the old router and start using PFSense? I know it might sound a little bit daunting at first, but I'll be helping you every step of the way. We'll start by checking the materials that we're gonna need, then we're gonna be designing the network, preparing everything, and finally, we'll be installing and configuring PFSense. So, for this project, we're gonna need one USB stick, a screen and a keyboard, but just for the initial PFSense setup, so don't worry, it's not gonna be, it's, we're not gonna need it to be plugged in constantly. An ISP router and modem, uh, a device to install PFSense. My recommendation is an affordable fanless PC like a King Dell from AliExpress. The King Dell has four cores, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and most importantly, for 2.5 uh, gigs uh, ethernet ports. Another thing you're gonna need is a managed switch for future VLAN support, and we will be doing VLANs in this channel. And another thing you might need is an access point, ideally one that supports VLANs like uh, a Unify or a TP-Link. You can get away without an access point, and I am going to talk a little bit more to, uh, a little bit more about that towards the end of the video. And four Ethernet cables. I personally always use CAT7 cables, but you know, you're free to use whatever you think it's best. How are we doing about the money? Okay, it could be a lot worse. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these brands. These are my opinions and my opinions alone. I will leave links in the description though, just to make your lives a little bit easier, but you guys feel free to purchase this stuff from anywhere you like. Now, let's head to the network design. We'll be modifying your network and ISP router. So first, we will set your ISP router to bridge or modem mode. So essentially turning this into a layer two device. Don't worry if these terms are a little bit confusing because I'll delve into them in future videos. Connect the ISP modem to the fanless PC and the second port to your managed switch. Finally, connect the access point and the other wire devices to the switch. Remember that PFSense is first and foremost a firewall. So I like to have it placed between my WAN and my LAN, or my public network and my local network. In my opinion, it's, well, the most secure place to actually place the firewall, especially in a home network scenario. So this will be the network design, and as you can see, it's super simple, easy peasy, anyone can do it. Now, let's set up PFSense. Let's um, prepare, so we need to set up PFSense, and we're gonna do it on this little USB stick here. I already got this set up, so we're gonna be downloading Rufus first. Super simple, we just download this first. Here we go, this one. Let's just put it on the desktop. Cool. Now let's download PFSense. I already got it set up here. Architecture AMD64, installer USB memstick, VGA. 
Uh, we're gonna choose Germany because it's closer to us. Download, desktop. Yeah, sounds good. All right, it's coming. I have fast internet, so good for me. All right, next, let's just extract this stuff out here. Super fast. Desktop. And yeah, that should be fine. Just make sure you have the device correctly selected in there and nothing else in it so you don't... Okay. And it's writing. Rufus. Rufus reminds me that uh, character from Norseman. Every time I see this program, it just reminds me of him. It's so funny. If you guys haven't seen uh, Norseman on Netflix, it's a Norwegian show. Do it. It's just really funny. Anyway, I'm going to speed this up. Okie doke. It's done. Let's just close this. Eject this stuff. We got PF Sense on the stick. So... We're ready to install it. Let's go. Just like we did in the design, switch your ISP router to bridge or modem mode. Okay, wait a few minutes and connect everything as per our design. That's the ISP modem uh, to the first port of your fanless PC and the second port of your fanless PC to your managed switch, followed by the access point and wire devices if you want to connect everything straight away. If you don't know the ISP router's user interface address, just type ipconfig slash all on the command prompt and look for the default gateway. Now, power off your router for 30 seconds before turning it back on just to ensure a smooth connection because, you know, sometimes you don't get a public IP straight away. Connect your fanless computer to a monitor and keyboard, insert the USB stick and, well, let's start configuring PFSense. And now for the fun part of the video. So if you press that power button, you should have a screen looking like this. Now, just a small disclaimer here. For the tutorial part, I am going to be using a virtual machine, okay, to configure PFSense. That's because I only have one fanless PC. This is not a sponsored video, as I told you in the beginning. And that one fanless PC has got all of my home network in it. So I don't really want to wipe it out, okay? But don't worry about it because it should be exactly the same. We just, you know, a couple of caveats and I'm gonna tell you exactly where those are. Okay, copyright, yeah, no one ever reads this stuff. Install PFSense. Yeah, you wanna choose ZFS because it deals a lot better with, you know, data corruption and stuff like that. It's a little bit more uh, memory hungry, but you got, if you got the fanless computer that I recommended, uh, you should have about 8 gigs of RAM, and that um, that's more than enough. Okay, here, proceed. Yeah, proceed with the installation. No redundancy. I have VMware Virtual Disk because obviously I'm using my ESXi server to do this, this demonstration, but in your case, you will have just the one drive that uh, comes with your uh, fanless computer. Okay, yes, and that's it. It should be installing and it will be actually quite quick. And after this, it's going to go through all of the initial configuration. Oh, okay, I need to reboot it first. If you followed along, just like we had in the network design, and you plugged um, the cables exactly how we've designed them in you know, the WAN port on the zero ethernet and the LAN port on the ethernet one, the configuration should be exactly like this here. Just press enter here. Now, enter the WAN interface. That's when we pl plugged in the ISP router into the fanless computer. So it's going to be the VMX0. And then the LAN is going to be the other port, which is the VMX1. Okay, so if you got to here, the only thing that is different from you is the WAN IP address which in your case, it will be some other number other than this private network address, okay? This IP that you have here, 192.168.1.1, that's gonna be the internal um, PFSense configuration page or the default gateway. Let's head on to that now. We're ready to configure PFSense, but first, let's check which IP we have. So let's just go to the command line and write IP, oops, can't type anymore. IP config. You can never type when people are looking at you. But anyway, so we got a default type, we got a default gateway already, and we got an IP address assigned to us. So that means we should be in business. So let's just head on to 
PFSS configuration page and it's, it's HTTPS, so you just go proceed to save. The username will be admin and the password will be PFSense, all lowercase. And that's it. Now we just need to do the configuration and this is super simple. So just press next, next again. Uh, I can put something like Bodhisattva. <laughs> I just love that. Probably that's not how you spell it, but anyway. Uh, primary DNS server, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna be using Unbound as our DNS resolver, but we'll just put these ones here for now. If you wanna know what that stuff is, DNS resolver, Unbound, etc., don't forget to subscribe. Um, okay, override DNS, click next. Yeah, this is, you can choose whatever time zone you want, but I'm just gonna leave this one here for now. Um, okay, select type. I have DHCP because I don't really have a private, uh, uh, sorry, I don't really have a public IP address assigned to me by my uh, ISP, but you might have. So if you do, you just go on and you configure it in here. I'm gonna leave all of this in blank. And okay, so this bit right here, if again, if you followed along and you have your ISP router in modem mode uh, or bridge mode, you can leave these things like this. But if you don't, and towards the end of the video, I'm actually showing you how, or telling you how you could do this uh, without putting the um, uh, ISP router into modem mode, you will have to disable these things here, okay? So you don't have complications with uh, your WAN setup. So just go next. Yeah, that's fine. 192.168.1.1, the most used uh, private uh, IP uh, lease there is. Uh, we're gonna have a 24 cider subnet mask and that's good. Password, make sure you put something secure. I just put test, you know, it's fine because it's just for demonstration purposes. And then reload and that should be it. So just finish. You can check for updates, but I just downloaded this. So we click accept, close, all of this jargon. And that is it. It should be working and you should have an IP. Now, let's just go here. It should be fine, uh, but just, just in case we just release and renew. If you changed your IP, you should be doing this. So if you put something like 10.10.10.1 or 10. .10 you know, whatever IP you, you wanted to put in there, you should come here and do IP config slash release. This is because you want your client to request a new IP from the DHCP server and the DNS uh, server as well that um, this is gonna be working with. So let's just see if Cloudflare is working and it's working. And let's just see if we can go to Google. We can, that's it, it's working, it's great. Now, a thing you can do is um, PFSense comes with a lot of um, nice features, uh, nice UI features that I, I, personal, I personally really like. And my favorite ones are service status, which is this here. And I always have this set up. And there is as well, where's the other one? Shh, 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 shh. Ah, interface statistics. This is really cool to see if you have takes just a little bit of time to, yeah, this is really good so that you can see if there's any errors or collisions in your network, but we only have these, this one uh, network here, so it should be fine. Um, and if you ever want to, you know, um, restart one of these uh, servers, you can just go here, like the GHCP server, the DNS resolver, you can just go here and do it, okay? Oh, one more thing, let's just see if we have uh, this in resolver, which is, of course, yeah, it's enabled, which means that we got DNSSEC support enabled, which means that in here, these DNS servers, they're just for the system, really. Oops, what's this? Uh, it's just for the system because since we're using Unbound as a DNS resolver, um, it works as a recursive DNS server. You wanna know more about this, right? So don't forget to subscribe to it, okay? All right. That's all and that's it and we got PFSense configured. If you followed along, congratulations because you should now have a fully functional PFSense and newly fortified, secure and feature rich uh, network. Setting up PFSense on your network without an additional access point is also possible, especially if you're working with your broadband routers built-in Wi-Fi. 
So instead of placing the ISP router in modem or bridge mode, we will just be disabling its DHCP server. By doing so, you effectively bypass the ISP DNS server, which would otherwise be assigned uh, to your devices through the ISP's DHCP server. And it's, it's gonna work. The reason, the technical reason behind this lies in the fact that uh, network, address uh, network Address Translation, or NAT, operates at layer 3, while Wi-Fi spans across layer 1 and layer 2, with switching occurring at layer 2. However, it's essential to note that this setup introduces a potential hurdle known as Double NAT, or Double Network Address Translation. And this kind of, you know, this is kind of a problem for gamers. Um, also remember to revisit your firewall rules, especially in your WAN interface. You will want to disable a couple of rules if they're enabled. We'll be exploring these uh, features in, uh, you know, in depth in upcoming videos, and I really hope that you found this video both informative and enjoyable. I'm Philippe, and I look forward to see you on the next video, so take care, and once again, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, bye.